welcome back. We had some fair skies today. Temperatures at 66. Winds northeast at 24 miles per hour. The humidity at 32% and the barometric pressure at 30.28 and steady. Now for our air conditions, looks like everything's experiencing some fair skies. Generally in the 60s with Oaktown and Wheatland at 66 degrees. Patoka and Sumner, Illinois at 64 degrees. Now, as you take a look at our U.S. current temperature map, it looks like in the southeast, temperatures are a bit warmer. There are in the 70s, 80s, and also 90s with Corpus Christi, Texas at 91, and also Jacksonville, Florida at 92. Now, as we move into the west, it looks like um, we do have temperatures are in the majority are in the 50s, 60s, and also in 70s with Chicago, Illinois at 58, and also Reno, Nevada at 78 degrees. As we move into our frontal map, as you guys can see, we have the stationary front causing some scattered showers from much parts of that area. And also we do have some showers in the central and also southern plains. Now for those cold fronts that moved in the last couple of days, they're, no, they're now off into the east causing some scattered showers in the New England area. Now I want to focus on this high pressure system because this high will cause some dry conditions for the next couple of days. Now for tonight, partly cloudy, north-northeast winds, 5 to 10 miles per hour with a low of 45. And for tomorrow, par partly sunny skies, east-northeast winds, 5 to 10 miles per hour with a high of 68. Tomorrow night, partly cloudy skies with some calm winds with a low of 47. Now for our extended forecast, it looks like for Vincennes family and alumni weekend, we have the chilly cook-off here on Saturday, mostly sunny with a high of 74 and a low of 56. Sunday, uh, partly sunny with a high of 79 and a low of 61. Monday, mostly cloudy with a high of 79 and a low of 60. So it looks like we will have a great weather for all the weekend's festivities, Mitch. Great, that's good to hear. Thanks, Danny. Indianapolis Colts players continue to rally around quarterback Kerry Collins in the aftermath of Sunday's loss at Houston. Cody Culley is in now with more. Cody? Thanks, Mitch. In the wake of negative comments aimed at Collins, Colts players say everyone should share in the blame for Saturday's loss. I'll have more following the break. Next time on Nature, giant crocodiles, relics of the dinosaur age, struggling to survive the modern age. Have we shot out the giant gene? Are there any more 20-foot crocodiles left in the world? Join crocodile expert Rom Whitaker as he tries to track down the last of the supersized crocs. There she goes. Hi, I'm Mark Wahlberg. Have you ever dreamed of hitting it big? Well, these people have. It was $2. $2, though. Two bucks. That was just... just... Do you think it's gone up in value any? Well, I'm beginning to think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh what? Oh, my Lord, you're kidding me. <laughs> Join us for our special edition of Antiques Roadshow, Jackpot. Colts trying to stay positive. Good evening, everyone. For WVUT Sports, I'm Cody Culley. Indianapolis Colts offensive lineman Jeff Saturday says fans shouldn't lay the blame for Sunday's loss at the door of quarterback Kerry Collins. As a team, Saturday says the Colts made too many mistakes that cost them a chance to stay in the game. Saturday remains optimistic that the season won't be a wash just because they'll be without Peyton Manning. We fought, there was no doubt, there was no quitting any of the guys, they, the effort was very good. Uh, I felt like we got better as the game went on, we got settled down, um, started putting together productive drives, moving the ball a little bit better. Uh, but, you know, when you spot somebody 34 points, it's, it's uh, you know, you're playing for pride at that point, you're just try, hoping something happens. And, um, you know, the Texans give them credit, man, they took advantage of every mistake we made and, and made the most out of it. The Colts are preparing for their home opener against Cleveland at Lucas Oil Stadium Sunday. The Browns are coming off a disappointing loss to Cincinnati in their season opener. 
Chicago Bears linebacker Brian Erlacher returned to Halas Hall sat today after leaving the team to be with family members as they mourn for the death of his mother. It is uncertain whether Erlacher will play Sunday when the Bears visit the New Orleans Saints. Coach Lovey Smith said the team will let Erlacher have as much time as possible to grieve. Brian, I'm lucky to be his coach, but our relationship goes a lot farther than that. I lost my mother earlier this year. One of the first guys on the telephone uh, with me was Brian. Our players, of course, are concerned, and we're giving him, of course, family time right now, but we're just going to be there to support him in any way that we can. The 33-year-old Erlacher is in his 12th season with the Bears. He is coming off a year in which he had 96 tackles, 29 assists, and four sacks along with an interception. The NFL fined Green Bay Packers quarterback Charles Woodson $10,000 for throwing a punch in the regular season opener against the New Orleans Saints. The Packers were penalized 15 yards in the third quarter for Woodson's punch. He was not ejected and the Packers went on to win 42-34. After the game, Woodson admitted he took a swing at Saints tight end David Thomas because he was frustrated over being held. The New England Patriots are backing away from comments made by their star quarterback Tom Brady. During a locker room interview, Brady told reporters he wants to see the crowd pumped up for Sunday's home opener in Foxborough. He jokingly advised fans to start tailgating way before game time. Yeah, start drinking early. <laughs> get, get, get nice and rowdy. It's a 4-15 game. They'll have a lot of time to get lubed up and come out here and cheer for their home team. The Patriots quickly denied Brady was suggesting fans drink too much. The team claims he meant stay hydrated, drink a lot of water, be loud, and drink responsibly. At the ballparks Wednesday, the Pittsburgh Pirates clinched their 19th consecutive losing season, a record for a major league franchise in North America, by losing 3-2 to two to the St. Louis Cardinals. Yadier Molina hit a tie-breaking two-run double as the Cardinals have now won seven of eight games and trail the Atlanta Braves in the National League wild card race by four and a half games. The Philadelphia Phillies became the first team to reach the playoffs this season after a 1-0 win over the Houston Astros. Shane Victorino doubled in the first inning and scored the only run on Plasto Polanco's single to help Philadelphia avoid a three-game sweep. Roy Halladay escaped trouble in the second and seventh, finishing with seven strikeouts and one walk for his first shutout of the season. The Detroit Tigers extended their longest winning streak in 77 years to 12 games as they rallied past the Chicago White Sox for a 6-5 win. Carlos Guillen's RBI single in the 10th inning brought home the game winner as the Tigers lowered their magic number to two games. Jose Valverde struck out the side in the 10th to remain perfect in 44 save opportunities this season. Finally in sports, it's time for our play of the day. Let's head out to City Field where the New York Mets hosted the Washington Nationals Wednesday night. In the bottom of the ninth, the Mets' Jose Reyes, representing the winning run, drives this ball to left center, and Washington's Rick Ankeel makes the nice diving catch to end the game. Take another look as Ankeel is able to run this one down and make the diving catch to end the game and preserve the win for the Nationals. Drew Storen loving the catch by Ankeel. Jose Reyes not liking the catch as he slams his helmet on the ground in frustration. And with that catch, Ankeel earns our play of the day, Mitch. That's too bad Ankeel isn't a Cardinal anymore. Thanks, Cody. Coming up next, you've seen stories about suspects who run from police. But how about a suspect who escaped from the back seat of a police car while handcuffed? We'll have the story when we return. On Masterpiece Mystery. Looks like a poisoning description. They couldn't see his face, he had his hood up. What a young lad. Not that sort of hood. I often wondered about this place and all the monks. They're friars. Do I bear even the slightest resemblance to a detective? No. Where's the repentance? Repentance? Where are we going with this, Robbie? Four murders in five days. I can't count, Mom. Inspector Lewis on Masterpiece Mystery. On the next History Detectives, what does this medal reveal about a top-secret American military project during World War II? 
What can this pennant tell us about one woman's role at a crucial point in the women's suffrage movement? And how does this curious artwork connect to the beginnings of some of our most beloved cartoon characters? So what you're telling me is that Buddy was going head to head with Mickey Mouse. Now you see him, now you don't. A suspect handcuffed in a police cruiser managed to salivate his way out of his cuffs. CNN's Jeannie Most reports on a backseat escape artist. Sometimes suspects are guilty of being deviously ingenious. Take the bank robber who, when captured, ate the alleged hold-up note. Bon appetit. But why is this guy licking his handcuffs? Am I going to jail for something? After allegedly brandishing a knife, Quincy Alexander was handcuffed in the back of a West Bloomfield, Michigan police cruiser. The first thing he managed to do was to move his cuffed hands from behind him to in front. He also emptied his pockets, which police say contained heroin. And then he used his mouth to lubricate an apparently loose handcuff. Let's time him, see how long it takes him to take off the cuffs. Left alone in the cruiser with the radio on, Alexander gnawed, salivated, and tugged for a mere 17 seconds before the cuff came off, a veritable handcuff Houdini. He kept looking around for the officer. You could almost see him think. And while we're at it, shouldn't the suspect be wearing his seatbelt? And then there's the minor detail of how he managed to open a window to get out. The barrier between front and back had been left open, so Alexander just crawled into the front seat. Watch the light change as he presses the button opening a rear window. Out the window he went. At least this cruiser was parked. A handcuffed burglary suspect in Utah threw himself out the window of a moving police car window was open because he'd been throwing up. When he threw himself out, he was not seriously injured, though he was recaptured. And so was Alexander. Just three hours later, his Freddie Mercury moment short-lived. I've got to break free. But if you're going to break free, at least turn off the radio. Gimo, CNN, New York. And that's all we have for you this evening. For Danny Taborn and Cody Cully, I'm Mitch Columbi. Good night. This is WVUT Vincennes.